If you wanna learn how to make Southern style green beans like this, meet me in the kitchen. Let's make it happen. All right, first things first, we're gonna get the party started with prepping our veggies. For that, we need one diced onion. We got some red potatoes. To start off with the onion, you wanna leave the root intact here and you're gonna make slices in one direction. This is the easiest way to dice an onion. Always protect your fingers. I want you guys to leave the kitchen with as many fingers as you came into it with. Then we're gonna slice this way twice. That holds everything together. Makes it a lot easier to dice. All right, next up, we're gonna go ahead and get started on the red potatoes. You can use whatever potatoes you like, Yukon Gold. Red's kind of more traditional in my opinion, but again, use whatever you have on hand, whatever you like. I'm just gonna quarter them up like so. Nice bite-sized pieces is what you're looking for. The key here, guys, is you just want each potato to be about the same size. That way they get tender at the same rate. You don't wanna have some potatoes that are tender and then other potatoes that aren't fully cooked. So if you have some of these bigger potatoes, you might wanna cut them down a little bit more. Just think about what fits comfortably on a spoon. You wanna look for the best bite. That's what we're striving for. So just keep that in mind as you're prepping your veggies. All right, so we're gonna cook our bacon in a cold Dutch oven. When I say cold, I basically mean room temperature. The reason for that is you want to, you want to render as much of the bacon fat out of the bacon as possible because that fat's gonna act as flavor for the rest of our dish. So we got it in the pot here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heat on medium and just let that bacon start to render down all that fat as flavor. All right guys, so obviously we're using pork here. You can use your bacon substitute, beef bacon. You could try turkey bacon, but turkey bacon is not gonna give you this wonderful bacon fat here at the bottom of the pan that's gonna flavor the rest of our pot. So feel free to use whatever substitute you want. You could also use smoked turkey necks or something like that to uh, add the flavor as well. All right, so at this point I killed the heat because I don't want to scorch my onions. We're gonna go ahead and get those onions in there with the bacon and the bacon fat. Immediately your house is gonna be smelling good because few things smell better than bacon and onions and the garlic that's on the way. So at this point you just wanna go ahead and saute the onions in that bacon fat, allow them to start to soften up a bit. Then we're going in with either fresh garlic or garlic paste. You guys know I like to use my garlic paste because it's convenient. I'm sure there'll be some folks in the comments saying mean things about that, but what the hell. All right, so we're going in with a teaspoon of Better Than Bouillon roasted chicken base. This is the low sodium version. I'm gonna add that to the party. That's gonna kick up the flavor tremendously. Tons of great concentrated chicken flavor there. That's gonna complement the chicken stock that doesn't really taste like much. It's also a low sodium as well, so you can kind of monitor your sodium intake by you know, tasting as you go, adjusting the flavor to your preference. Next up, we're going with four cups of low sodium chicken broth or chicken stock. Whatever you really have in the fridge is cool. Veggie stock will work here as well. We're gonna bring that to a simmer. Then we're gonna get those green beans in there, cover those with the lid for about 15 minutes, then add in the potatoes, cook that until it's tender. Now the reason I'm adding the green beans first instead of the potatoes first is because the green beans actually take a little bit longer than the potatoes to get tender. So you wanna start with what takes the longest to cook. Cover that with a lid for 15 minutes. So as you can see, the green beans are turning a nice bright green color. That's exactly what you wanna see. They're starting to get tender. And now it's time to flavor them up. I'm going in with some smoked paprika and a little bit of my all-purpose seasoning. So we got the better than bouillon in there. We got the garlic, we got the bacon. We're about to add some butter. You know it's getting good when you got bacon and butter in the same recipe. All purpose, a little smoked paprika to play off the smokiness from the bacon. But again, guys, use whatever your favorite seasoning is. Taste as you go and adjust the flavor to your preference. All right, so once the green beans get a head start, we're going in with one pound of cleaned and diced or chopped red potatoes. We're gonna mix that in nicely and just let those simmer until they get fork tender. Once they get fork tender, taste one, make sure that they're right where you want them to be. This might be a Thanksgiving dish. You don't want your aunts and uncles judging you with the bland green beans. It shouldn't be bland if you follow this recipe though. All right, so at this point, we're gonna go ahead and throw this on the back burner. Let it roll for about 15 more minutes until those potatoes are nice and tender. All right, so we'll do the fork test on the potato. You want a spoon and a fork. We're gonna pick up one of the potatoes with the spoon and we're looking for it to be fork tender. So if it comes, the fork comes out clean, nice and easy, that you know, lets you know that your potato is tender. We're not quite there, but we're getting close. Perfect time to add that half a stick of butter. 
Probably got about another five minutes or so. All right, so after a couple more minutes, the potatoes should be just about right. And I can tell by how easily the fork's going in and out that they're ready to go. We're getting here for a quick taste test, just a taste for seasoning. And because I'm a little hungry. I'm gonna hit with a little bit more all purpose and a little more smoked paprika. Really doesn't need a whole lot more. But again, always taste as you go. You make the judgment call. We went, we used a lot of low sodium products, so you know nothing's too too salty in here. Just perfect. I'm gonna give that a good mix to combine. Give that another minute or two, and then we're gonna plate this up. And this is the part where I say brace yourself for a trademark money shot. Say it with me, guys. Looking good. The only thing left to do is grab my fork and dig in for the taste test. But before we do that, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that bell to enable notifications as well. Mm. If y'all don't show you some love for this one on Thanksgiving, she might just be a hater. <laughs> 